have confession to make. I do not have any pets now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but over the years, I've had plenty, believe me. Um, believe me. Uh, when I was a kid, I had Yin Ling. She was a Pekingese. We called her Yinny Poo. Uh, she had a little attitude. Uh, we had parakeets. We had Billy the parakeet. We had several. When they die, we'd get a new parakeet and call it Billy. It was for Sir William Wallace. The <laughs> Hamlet the hamster. Anybody have hamsters? Uh -huh. yeah. We had uh, Toby, who was a... Uh, Oh, see. Well, we also had a, an aquarium growing up, but then when my kids were little, we had Billy the Yorkie Terrier mix, and we had uh, Chrissy the uh, Chihuahua Terrier mix, and we had Toby the Sharpe Lab mix. Uh, we also had Callie the Cat and some hamsters and on and on. My granddaughter now has a Dachshund mix. There's a theme here. Um, Mateo, named in honor of her Uncle Matt. <laughs> and I'm also surrounded by uh, pets in the condo where I live. It's always funny to go home after work and see all these people coming home from work emerging with their dogs from their condos to, to walk them after they've been in the inside all day. And many of them take them on jaunts over to nearby Piedmont Park. Now, I love to walk through Piedmont Park. Who's been there? Of course, everybody goes to Piedmont Park. It's the central park of Atlanta. Lake Claremere and the Active Oval and the and the Green where they have uh, concerts and events. We, they had mid a music Midtown a couple of weekends ago, which whoa, pretty wild. Um, and they of course have dog parks there. A couple of big dog parks that are always well populated. Well, there's one. It was a glorious autumn afternoon when I was walking through Piedmont Park and I had. Uh, my iPhone, I was listening to this meditative musical loop and just kind of enjoying the crisp air and the, the leaves beginning to turn and, and this music to soothe my thoughts. And I, I was in my own little world and then I suddenly started paying attention to what was around me, all the people around me. And what hit me as I opened my eyes was there in the park was the rich diversity of the population at any given moment, surrounded by lively life. Anywhere I looked, I found something different, but I especially noticed the pets. Lots of pets. Dogs of all breeds and mixtures and mutts were walking their owners. <laughs> you know what that means. The gorgeous trees were starting to burst into color. Young people were vigorously playing touch football in the, in the big green area, father with an infant strapped to his chest, pointing his toddler daughter to look at the geese landing on the lake like they were skiing. Um, groups of students from Grady High School across the street wandering aimlessly, you know, texting and talking and laughing. A large and animated family of several generations gathered at picnic tables enjoying a barbecue meal, an older couple walking hand in hand and enjoying the, the scenery and sharing the moment with each other. A homeless man with a well-worn backpack on a park bench that had a plaque that announced that a society matron had donated that. It's, it was as if Psalm 104 had come to life before my eyes and surrounded by the glorious creation of God. There were people of all ages and sizes and shapes, runners, walkers, strollers, all kinds of people, and all found a place of welcome in the park. Everybody was just there enjoying the park together. And the panorama that surrounded me was so beautiful that tears came to my eye, tears of joy and hope. This was the family of humanity, of all of life, <coughs> in the midst of God's creation. Psalm 104 is a song of praise to our Creator God for all the incredible beauty and diversity of this world and the whole created order, including the animals, the pets that are such a blessing to our lives. It's a psalm drenched with what Walter Brueggemann has called God's exuberant generosity. So today, in honor of St. Francis, we welcome our beloved animal companions home to St. Gabriel's. And as you hear these verses again from Psalm 104, 
open yourself to hear between the lines a bit and, and think about your own beloved pets now or in the past. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships, the Leviathan, that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. And you know when your pet wants food, right? Mm -hmm. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed, just like we are, these creatures. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust, just like we do. And when you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. You have, everybody that's ever had a pet knows the spirit, the life that's within those pets. And I believe they will be with us forever as well. I think God cares about our animal companions. It's very clear in this psalm. God created them and cares for them. God's whole creation is marked by manifold diversity. And in wisdom, God made them all. All. All people, no matter who we are, all living creatures, animals, our pets look to God to provide their needs. All of us are dependent on God to fill us with good things. And so we're all in this together. And of course our pets help us get through that together. We live in this created order marked by a uniqueness and individuality, yet we live together under the glory of God. Can we welcome one another in this place? Can we live together and enjoy the differences that each one of us brings? And what can our pets teach us about that? There was a day one sermon a few years ago, and the pastor of a church right near Piedmont Park drew an important lesson from that image of the park as a welcoming place. He said, it doesn't matter who you are, what your job is, how you are dressed, or what you've done. There's a place for you at Piedmont Park. The park comes to my mind sometimes when I think of what the church looks like at its best. A community where everyone is welcome and has the opportunity for healing and renewal. I think that's the case in our parish here, the faith community here at St. Gabriel. We yearn for it to be a place of generous welcome for all, even today our beloved animal companions. It's a place that offers healing and renewal and family to whoever comes. So let's do all we can to make sure that's always true. Amen. Amen. Amen.